I'm PJ Brennan. I'm the Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President for the University of Pennsylvania Health System. I think in our domain of healthcare delivery, probably the, the thing that comes most readily to mind is the implementation of information technology and, and some of the things that we've, we've learned from that. We've gone back and forth between big bang rollouts and, and smaller pilots. And uh, one of the things that has, has emerged is that in, um, in a second generation rollout of a computerized physician order entry system, we found that while we had designed the system with patient safety in mind, we had probably ceded too much of the authority in that to one stakeholder group uh, who was very much focused on patient safety, but that in turn had other consequences because uh, other key stakeholders weren't as, as involved in that, that sort of design. What that led to down the road as we've uh, in, implemented other systems is a greater awareness of the stakeholders and almost uniformly subsequent in implementations have been much more effective and ultimately much safer because we had, uh, we had greater input. So the, the failure was uh, uh, not an obsession but uh, a focus on, uh, on an issue and on one stakeholder gr group to the ex exclusion of several others. And uh, in, in future iterations, uh, I think we really had a safer, more effective process. I think that uh, for us, it's really uh, about transparency and uh, about having a culture that focuses on systems and gets away from blaming individuals. Um, in, in healthcare, uh, you know, failures can have really significant consequences, uh, and we understand that, and we know that patients can be seriously harmed by failures in our processes. And we have to be able to talk about those issues, uh, but we have to do it in a way in which uh, people are, feel safe, that they're not threatening their livelihoods and uh, that uh, we're going to examine openly and honestly the whole process. That doesn't mean that individuals aren't held accountable for uh, errors that they make, but that uh, the process itself is not about retribution or blame or punishment, but that it's about finding uh, underlying root causes fixing the problems that we've identified and figuring out how those issues may be generalizable and lead to innovations beyond the borders of the, of the problem area. So transparency and, uh, and a focus on systems and uh, uh, having what we call a just culture, not a blameless culture necessarily, but a, but a just culture is really, uh, really, really critical in our business. Well, I think that the, the kind of insights that we need are, uh, are, are not just on the issues that uh, we haven't fixed yet, but the issues that really we don't understand, that we haven't uh, begun to uncover because we haven't asked the right questions. I think that in order to do that, we're going to have to get much closer to our patients in healthcare and understand what are the things that, that they need. Uh, we talk a lot about patient centeredness in healthcare, but if you talk to a hundred healthcare providers, you'd probably find a hundred different uh, ways of thinking about what patient centeredness is. Patient centeredness is not about abdicating, abdicating the responsibility and decision making and all choices to patients. It's really about sharing the decision making process with them and understanding with them uh, what it is they want and, and need. So I think that in order for us to, to innovate, it's, it's really about understanding uh, what we don't know yet and, uh, and having a source for that information. And it's going to come from, uh, it's going to come from our patients and uh, to some degree it's going to come from our staff as well who are at the, uh, at the sharp edge of, of care delivery. And uh, you know, we uh, are trying very much <clears throat> to get away from the centralization of uh, quality and safety initiatives in, in Penn Medicine. And provide people on the front lines with enough information to understand how their unit or their staff are performing and let them innovate because they know the business better than we do. Well, <clears throat> there, 
is a lot of evidence for some practices in healthcare, and in other areas, there's a real dearth of evidence. So when I think about the failures, uh, I, I, I like to think about the processes that, that may be failing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, you, we shouldn't be doing surgeries where there's a, a high likelihood of failure. Uh, that probably reflects a, you know, a poor choice or, or a poor decision making. I'm really interested in figuring out how processes work or don't work and discarding those that are failing. That's where, you know, the, the innovation needs to come. In places where we have evidence in healthcare, we need to find the ways in which we can come to conformity in practice around that evidence very quickly because evidence is developed all the time, new knowledge is created at places like Penn, but that new knowledge is oftentimes not translated into practice for a decade or more. So we need to figure out how to get the evidence into practice faster and in so doing understand what's working and what's not, what's failing and what's succeeding and discarding the failed process of bringing evidence to the front line and finding the right process for bringing evidence to the front line. In those zones where there's uh, very little evidence, then we need to be studying it so we can find places uh, where we can have conformity. So uh, I like to say there are <clears throat> there's islands of evidence surrounded by oceans of uncertainty, and we need to make the islands bigger and create, create more evidence. So the, the failures can occur and should occur as we try to, in an iterative, iterative way, to work out the processes of bringing evidence into, in, into practice. We don't want to see failures in the delivery of care.